Hey folks, in this video I'm going to show you how to build this little widget thing on the left that shows you how long it's been since a script was run. So if you refresh the script and want to run it from scratch, the timer is going to start from zero. Um, a lot of the bots on DreamBot actually have this thing called progress bar. Um, so let me give you an example. If you just search DreamBot progress on uh, Google, you will see that a lot of uh, script writers have this thing called a box that tells you, you know, what you're botting, what the progress is, and just some stats around like the performance of the bot. And so we're going to build some building blocks of that by just adding this little black background, not black, maybe light to dark gray black background, along with the thing that updates in real time every second. Um, to show you the most updated stats. So we're going to do that. All right, so let's first start by using a callback method on abstract script and it's called on paint. So if you just type in on paint, you should be able to pull up this, uh, this function that you can override. And what this means is we can now start to paint stuff on the UI. So I'm just going to give you a quick example of what we can do. Uh, we can log something. So let's do this is like on paint is called because I actually don't know how like when this is called. So maybe let's just start by having a log statement to figure out what goes on. So let's build the artifact. And let's refresh the script and we're going to run the script. So looks like on paints called basically like every every second multiple times. Um, so I'm going to stop the script for now. So let's build on that. So let's create a, looks like we have access to graphics. Let's see if we can set the color. Looks like there's a color method. Cool. And, uh, it's set to a color. So I think we can just do something like, um, uh, let's see. We can set it to color, uh, Okay, and then we can pass in, let's just see what the arguments are. So it looks like we can pass in four arguments, red, green, blue, and an alpha, which is more for opacity. So let's just put in some values and see what happens. So if we do 0f, 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 and then maybe 0.2f, let's just see what that is. And then we can do, um, let's see if we can put in like a rectangle of some sort. So like, looks like we have draw string, we have fill rectangle, draw rectangle. I don't really know what the difference is. Let's actually take a look at some of the docs. So we got fill rec and draw rec. So fill rec fills the specified rectangle. So that's probably more like, um, the, the color will be continuous. Um, this looks like it draws an outline. So let's actually uh, fill it. That's what I want to try. So I'm going to fill the rectangle with, um, so the coordinates are X, Y, width, and height. So um, how the coordinate system works on DreamBot is you go from top left and that's zero, zero. And um, the X axis goes left to right. And so if you increase the X amount, then um, you will go more to the right and then Y axis goes from top to bottom. So if you increase Y, you actually go lower. So I actually want to position this like somewhere over here. Um, so let's go ahead and let's actually take a look at the show mouse position. Maybe that'll help. Okay, there we go. So let's actually add it. Let's actually add a, um, uh, let's actually put it on the right side. Actually, that might be a little better. So let's actually put it right here. Um, the progress bar. So we've got so 562 and 66. Sorry, mouse position is 562.18. So let's actually draw a rectangle like that. So 562.18. And let's take a look at the um, uh, the last few arguments. You got a width and a height. So let's see, 562.18. Um, let's see, if we keep moving here, that's around. 562 to 725. So that's around 
60. So let's just say, let's give it a width of 60 and let's give it a height of, so let's see, if we're at 18, let's say we want to go, maybe let's just go down here for now, 142. So 18 to 142, that's around 120. So let's just give that kind of a, uh, a height. And let's actually see what, what happens. So um, let's build this and then let's run the script. Okay, so I think we can kind of see a box right here. Um, here, let's actually, mouse position, let's actually give it some more 560. So yeah, it's actually, I think this should be 120 or 160. So this is part of the development process where if we have a feedback loop like this, it's actually kind of nice. So I'm gonna adjust the width of that box. So I'm gonna build the artifact and I'm gonna click refresh. So now you can see this box here. It's a little grayish, so I kinda of wanna make it darker. So this last is called opacity, which is like how much of, how transparent it is. So the lower this number is, the less transparent it is, or the more transparent it is. So let's actually up this like 0.8 and see, see what difference it makes. Okay, so I've rebuilt the artifact and I'm gonna refresh. So now it's a lot darker, that's cool. Great, so let's actually, this seems to be called quite often and I don't really want that to happen. So I'm gonna do graphics.color. Um, I'm gonna, let's say, sorry, I'm gonna just do thread.sleep. Let's just give it like a thousand milliseconds. So for you, for those of you that aren't familiar with programming, I did thread.sleep and it basically tells you, okay, it takes a long, which is, you can think of it as a big number and um, I want it to only print this out every second. So a thousand milliseconds is in a second. And if you just type a thousand, that should be good enough. And then now I'm gonna do Control Alt A, which there's a video of this of how to rebuild artifacts quickly with a shortcut. Um, I'll link it in the description below. But basically it allows me to do that. So now if you look at the console log, it's actually printing the statement one time every second. So now there's less drawing that it does and this can save your computer a lot of uh, memory and a lot of CPU power. If, you know, if this is like super expensive, if this does a lot of um, logic, then you might not want to call it as often. And it really depends on what your use case is. Um, so yeah, so this is like a number. Um, we could talk about some Kotlin stuff right now. So there are different, every variable has a thing called a type. And so for example, this is a string, right? It's basically text. Um, all these things are considered numbers. Um, so this is like an integer, this is a long. I don't think it's that important for you to know what the difference is. Um, let's write something simple um, where we figure out what the time is uh, or how long this script has been running. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a on start. So if you just type in on start on your IDE, you should already have this function. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna just set the start time. So whenever the script starts, we're gonna set the start time as a local variable. Okay, so um, in Kotlin, there's this thing called a variable. So you can set it to start time. And let's just set it to null for now. And then we're gonna do start time equals. Now, um, if you're unfamiliar with programming, right, you can just do something like um, go to Google and you can do something like, uh, you know, like Kotlin, Kotlin um, get current time. I already know it in my head, but you don't really, you know, so there's this thing called local date time dot now, you could do that. Um, you can also uh, just do something like instant, right? And there's like Slack Overflow is a very popular website for engineers, software engineers to figure out like what you can do. Um, so I'm actually gonna go with this method here. It's called instant.now. Okay, so that's basically uh, giving you instant.now and uh, because we're using an IDE, you can hover over things and kind of see what's going on. 
and debug things. So, um, sometimes you can just press Alt, right? And it'll basically tell you like, okay, what, what does it do? Um, so in this case, because Kotlin is a type language, you need to specify what type it is, especially if, you, if the editor doesn't know. So I will do, this is a instant, which you could think of it as a timestamp that's specific to a really granular level. Like it basically tells you exactly how many milliseconds it is um, at the current time. Okay, so now that we have the current, we have the start time, let's actually print out what that is, right? So what we can do is we can do graphics.color and let's just set the text to white. So we could do color equals color dot white. Okay. And then we're gonna do graphics. Um, is there a text method? Uh, string? Yes, there's a string method you can do. Looks like this uh, takes in a string as the first argument, takes in an X and a Y, okay? And then you can even just like press Apple key and then press draw string and then click on the method you're using and it actually gives you some documentation on um, what the uh, method takes and what it does. So this is like a very common way of figuring out what uh, interface or what a method does that can help you do what you're doing. So let's draw a string. Um, let's just do a hello world. Let's just point out some text for now and let's actually get the positioning right. So if I if I use my mouse tool again, let's just draw the text uh, basically right here. So 58157. Okay, so let's do that. So 58157. Okay, so let's just actually draw this for now and just let's just make sure that it shows up where we want it to show up and that it is white. There we go, it's a hello world. Okay, so let's actually change that to start time. Right, and we're gonna pass in, um, okay, so this is a string. We wanna put in, you know, whatever the start time is, right? So I'm just gonna show you what this looks like on the screen. Okay, so we wanna put the start time here and how you substitute a string in there is you can do something like uh, this dollar sign open curly brace, close curly brace, and you could put in the start time. And you might wanna, let's just do two string. Let's just see what, what it is. I don't exactly know what it is. Let's just make sure we can convert this type to a string. So I've rebuilt. Okay, it's gonna say no. So it looks like we didn't really set it. Um, okay, so now it's set. So that's actually giving you the time in terms of, uh, you know, like, I guess it's UTC time, huh? So if you uh, Google UTC time. So UTC time, it is 11.30 p.m. So that, yeah, it is 11.30 p.m. Great, cool. So that's start time. Let's actually do something more interesting. What if we wanted to show the seconds that it's been since we started this, uh, this script? So what we can do, Again, I know how to do this off the, top of my, off the top of my head, but if you want to know how to do it, you can say like time between two instants, right? And you can just look up the first link and you can kind of say like, okay, cool. If you have two instants and you can do duration up between and that should kind of get you the, the time it takes to do two things. So again, as a software engineer, you really shouldn't remember anything. You really just should know what works to Google to figure out the solution. So. Um, yeah, so let's just do something like, okay, we're gonna set a variable called the current time and we're gonna call instant.now. So now we have a start time and now we have a current time. Uh, so what we can do is we can say, um, I guess duration seconds is, so we can do uh, duration, so I'm just following this code here, dot between, and I'm gonna pass in, so I'm gonna make sure I import the right dependency I'm going to pass in the two instances. So I'm going to say start time and end time or the current time. And let's see what else is available. So I could do seconds. I can do, what else can I do? Two hours, two days, two milliseconds. Let's see if we can do milliseconds. That sounds pretty cool. 
and this is like ms, right? So now, instead of passing in the start time, we're gonna pass in the duration seconds, and I'm gonna say ms, which is milliseconds. Um, so now let's run the script. Okay. Then we're gonna refresh. Looks like there's, look at these milliseconds, that's great. Um, and now if you actually, what if we remove this? So in programming, there's this, there's always a thing called comments where you can kind of like add like, uh, for example, um, right? You can say like these two lines of code um, calculate the duration in which the script was run. Okay. And basically that's what it could do. So comments are lines that aren't executed, but it's helpful for developer communication. So whether you're just trying to like remember, let's say I wrote this code like five months ago and I want to revisit this code and see remember what it did. Um, and maybe it's a very confusing code and I just need to like just remind myself what it is. A comment could be helpful there. Uh, the other scenario where comments can be helpful is during debugging. So for example, right now, this only updates every second. What if I just wanted to set it to update as much as possible? Well, I can comment it out and see what it does. So I'm just gonna do that. And now this thread.sleep is not gonna execute. And when you look at the log statements, it's actually gonna happen more quickly. So let me just refresh. And as you can see, the start time is actually increasing um, pretty quickly. Um, but I'm just going to move this back to this before the next video. Um, but yeah, that concludes this video. Um, hope you learned something about primitives. So numbers, strings, how to put strings inside other strings, how to, um, basically get the current time in terms of, you know, hours, minutes, seconds, milliseconds, etc how to compare the current time and a time you set a long time ago, or in this case, comparing the time right now to when I first started the script in order to calculate how long this script has been running. Um, I introduced thread.sleep, which is just a way of slowing down a program and basically not letting a program execute until it has waited a full whatever amount of milliseconds you put in here. Um, I also introduced the concept of graphics and setting a color and opacity. So opacity, we talked about varying the brightness of this black box here. Um, and we also talked about the XY coordinate system uh, on the window and how to use a mouse positioning debugger tool to kind of figure out where we would put this box. Um, so yeah, this concludes this video. I hope you learned something and I'll talk to you next time.